Welcome. Um, good morning. Good evening. Um, depending on where you're dialing in from today, I suppose it's even good afternoon for some people. Um, I, we want to take the time to thank you for including us in your schedule today. It's always great to see such wonderful attendance. Um, and we do have a very special presentation. So we are appreciative of you making the time to join us for an hour this morning, evening, <laughs> afternoon. Um, before we get started, just some brief housekeeping. Um, throughout the conversation this morning, we're going to allow for Q&A. Um, please feel free to use chat feature or the Q&A feature on your panel. Just keep in mind that we are going to hold those questions until the end. We like to encourage dialogue throughout. So if you have something you want to ask, put it in there so you don't forget it. Um, just know we're not avoiding that. We're going to keep it to the end so that the presentation flows nicely. Um, and we do have USD faculty and students here that can answer questions that you may have. We are also going to have an opportunity to continue the conversation following the webinar. Um, if you are a member of our online community at the GRNEN website, um, we are going to have a discussion forum in our open forum um, community that's going to allow you to connect with um, the students who are presenting today, as well as USD faculty, so we can continue to talk about how we can encourage immersion experiences like this in the classrooms throughout the world, and to allow students to have conversations with other students to talk about what those experiences were like. So as we get started today, I would like to welcome our faculty presenters, Dr. Ann um, Klein Hessenlink has been a nurse educator for the University of South Dakota for 15 years. She has spent over 15 years working in rural healthcare facility in Iowa, began her nursing career as an associate degree RN, and went on to earn a BSN, MSN, and PhD. Over the span of her academic career at the University of South Dakota, she has served as a nursing faculty and in various um, excuse me, in a variety of leadership and executive leadership positions. Most recently, she has as the Department of the Nursing Chair, uh, excuse me, Nursing's Associate Chair of Academic Programs. In 2022, Dr. Klein Hesklink was awarded a $1 million Nurse Education Practice Quality and Retention Registered Nurse Training Program, HRSA grant, to be administered over the next three years. Also joining Dr. Ann Klassenhenk is Helen Hege, as she has been practicing nursing for over 35 years. She has practiced in many different clinical areas, including as the primary RN in a rural clinic for 10 years. While working in the rural health clinic, Ms. Heggie obtained her Master's of Science in Nursing Education. She has been a nurse educator at the University of South Dakota, USD, for the past 10 years. Additionally, we have joining us today, Don Warren, who is a nurse educator for the University of South Dakota for 29 years. She has worked in emergency and critical care nursing, but her biggest passion and joy is working with undergraduate BSN students. Dawn thoroughly enjoys being a part of the HRSA grant in which she works with university students in rural South Dakota. And now I would like to turn this over to um, our wonderful team to continue their presentation. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we are so excited to kind of um, explain to you what this grant is doing for our, our state of South Dakota, um, the University of South Dakota and our students. Um, we are, like we said, with the University of South Dakota and I'm Dr. Ann Klein Hesslink and I am the program director for the HRSA grant. And I will be joined today by Helene Heggie and Don Warren, who are the clinical lead ex clinical experience leads. And they are the ones who are really working with the students across the state of South Dakota and with our rural facility partners. You can go to the next slide. So the presentation today, we're gonna touch on four objectives. We're gonna inform you about this grant funded opportunity to place students across South Dakota in rural and underserved communities. We're gonna explore the challenges that we encounter as healthcare delivery in rural communities and underserved populations. We're gonna investigate the, how the confidence of current nursing students increased during these experiences. And then we're gonna also share with you 
um, three student nurse experiences as they participated in a clinical immersion experience in three different facilities. Um, next slide. So when we started this grant, we were fortunate enough to partner with GRNEN to help disseminate this the grant opportunities and the student experiences to a much larger audience. Um, part of what we really want to do is we want to bring interest, awareness, and competency to all nursing students as it pertains to rural health nursing. It is unique and um, lucky for us, GRNEN has given us the opportunity to platform these experiences and really share the challenges and um, the joy that has been, we have encountered throughout this experience. Okay, next slide. Hello all, um, as I was introduced, my name is Dawn Warren, and I am going to uh, tell you a little bit about the state of South Dakota for those of you who don't know about South Dakota. Uh, we are one of the smallest populated states. We have a population for the total state of 858,500 people. Uh, we have a large uh, population of tribal um, individuals. So we have nine tribal lands. And one of the um, advantages and really great parts about this grant is that we have gone to all nine tribal lands at least, and we'll be doing that at least a couple times um, per year to really work with some of the Native Americans and try and recruit them into this grant. Um, we have two major urban areas. Um, otherwise, uh, we're very, very rural. Like I said, there's just the two, two ends of the state that are more urban. Uh, for those of you maybe have heard of it, we have Mount Rushmore um, and the Black Hills National Forest. We also have the um, Badlands, which is a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, but by far, I think one of the biggest things that state of South Dakota is known for is we just have a lot, a lot of farming, ranching, uh, lots of agriculture. And as you can imagine, we'll hear from the students that that certainly presents some challenges um, with with those occupations in such a rural state uh, with limited resources. Next slide. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the HRSA grant and what our aims and purposes of the grant are. So um, we were awarded $1 million to be dis, uh, distributed over three years. And as part of this grant, it was really threefold um, to recruit uh, pros pro um, prospective students into the nursing profession, and then also recruit students, graduating students into rural settings, and then train them about the challenges and the obstacles that may be encountered in rural and underserved populations, but then also give them an opportunity to experience this through a clinical immersion program. Um, this was awarded to the University of South Dakota and USD, if you remember the map on the slide before, is in the very tippity tip southeast corner of South Dakota. So as you know, one of the challenges of getting students into rural settings is we have a very large state that is sparsely populated and we're in the tippity corner of South Dakota. So any experiences that, that these students have or that we try to um, offer is really geographically going to be a little bit of a challenge. So that's that's one thing. Um, USD has about 9,000 students. We are a public university, but we're a small university. And we sit in a town of Vermilion that is a population of about 11,600 people. So when the students come to town, we almost double in size, which I think is fantastic. Um, it's it's great to see that our nursing department has anywhere between 200 and 250 students in the program in the actual undergraduate BSN program at any given time. Um, we do have a, a campus in Vermilion, and then we have a campus in Sioux Falls. Um, really, two of the aims of this grant is really to bring awareness, interest, and competency of rural health nursing to our students, and then to help geographically disperse the nursing workforce as our students graduate. They tend to 
navigate to those urban areas that Don had spoke about, Sioux Falls and Rapid City, which leaves a large portion of, of the state um, desolate. So what we're trying to do is help geographically disperse our graduates across the state of South Dakota to help increase that rural health workforce. Um, next slide. My name is Helene Heggie, and as um, Ann klein hessel and Ketch shared, that I am, uh, Don and I work together with recruiting um, students and getting them out into the clinical setting across the state of South Dakota. So when we look at this HRSA grant, I'm just going to give you a little more background about it. So one of the pieces is that we recruit students into the nursing profession from diverse populations. And so we have a, um, a recruiting team also that is working with us that is going out into um, different populations. They're going to all of the native lands uh, throughout the state of South Dakota and um, hosting uh, different events for the high school students and for the populations um, in those communities to bring awareness um, to the nursing practice and also um, just bringing awareness about the importance of access to health care uh, in their communities. Another portion of this is then teaching. And um, so our uh, curriculum here at USD Nursing um, has gone under a review to make sure that we are generating um, education that is meeting the needs of Native American population across the state of South Dakota and also throughout the United States. And we're also um, making sure that students understand the importance of addressing social determinants of health, no matter where our patients are, um, even if it's urban or rural, um, so that we can uh, uh, promote health equity, that access to healthcare. And then our students will share today a little bit about how this experience is um, helping them to become leaders in the clinical setting, in the rural setting, and also increasing their clinical judgment. And so the other piece of this, which is um, with us having um, our students with us today, um, who are soon to be nurses, um, we are increasing our student awareness and interest and competency by placing them in rural service underserved communities across the state of South Dakota as a student um, to um, just to be immersed in that clinical setting to identify what it's like to be a rural health nurse. Uh, next slide, please. And so um, Dawn and I are gonna share a little bit about what this experience has been and how we set it up um, for the students. So. As we shared, the goal is to increase student awareness, interest, competency, and placement in rural and underserved communities. Um, and these communities are in the state of South Dakota. And so the experience, um, we are able to have 24 students to do this experience every year is what we are funded for through the grant. And as uh, Dr. Klein Hessling shared, it's a three year grant. And the experience that our students completed was a 135 hour clinical immersion experience in a rural acute care setting. So it, it's 11, 12 hour shifts. And um, during those shifts, the students are immersed into the community. So we offer um, housing um, through the grant, we'll pay for housing, we pay for travel um, because we want that student to be living uh, interacting with that rural community so that they understand what it, it really is like to be a rural health nurse. Um, Dawn, do you have anything else you'd like to share about the stipend um, and the experience? Sure. Yes, um, she summarized very well just the, the initial part about the, the hours, et cetera, that the students um, do. Um, the students that are there do get, it's, it's really a great um, offer for them and advantage for them because they do receive a $2,000 stipend just for participating in the grant in this clinical experience. And then as Helene also said, it, you know, we pay for all of their, their fuel. They actually, you know, make money on the fuel. We pay for their meals, we pay for their lodging. So 
it's not a hardship financially. In fact, I think most students would tell you that it really helped them uh, financially. But the biggest piece, of course, is they just have such a unique experience and get to experience a lot of things that they don't in the traditional um, clinical setting. I would also add that um, we try to do, uh, these students primarily did almost the whole thing in three weeks. So that really helped um, just getting that feel for being in that community. Um, and then just the back-to-back -back shifts and the continuity of being with the same nurse, et cetera. So it was really a great uh, partnership for them. The students really enjoyed it. Another thing that Dawn and I have been doing as a part of this role, and I think this is a different outcome that we haven't even shared or didn't even expect for it to occur, but before the students go to these clinical settings, Dawn and I, um, Dawn lives in Rapid City, which is on the western side of the state. I'm centered here in Vermilion on the eastern side of the state, so we, we kind of split the state up. Um, and Dawn kind of covers the Western side. I kind of cover the Eastern side. We help each other out um, to make these partnerships. So before the student goes to the clinical setting, we, we go into the clinical setting ourselves to make those relationships and that partnership with the um, community there at the hospital, just to make sure that it'll be a, a good setting for our students and then also a good setting for the facility. We wanna make sure we have a good partnership and, and meeting both of our outcomes and needs um, because we wanna make sure it, it helps these rural hospitals. So through this process, Dawn and I have met wonderful, wonderful people from across the state of South Dakota and just nurses in these rural hospitals who are just making a huge impact and a difference in the life of rural citizens of South Dakota. And it'll be um, exciting to hear about our students' experiences and the nurses that they worked with as well, because they truly are dedicated to their communities and are making a difference in the community setting. Next slide. So this is um, a picture of our state of South Dakota. This is where our students have been. Um, and uh, we will be um, rolling out another group of students are gonna be doing this experience over uh, Christmas break. So we'll be adding some more um, locations to this map. But as you can see, we've, we've started to, to get into the center of our state, but we have a large area that we have not um, reached yet. Um, so we will look forward to adding more red X's um, to our state map here. Next slide. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the outcomes that we've um, encountered as we've uh, had two cohorts now of students in this clinical immersion. And as part of the immersion, students take a pre-survey prior to entering into the clinical immersion and then a post-survey. And so I'm gonna share a little bit of those results with you. Um, the average age, we've had 21 students so far, 10 in the summer, 11 this, this fall. Um, the average age of student is 23 years old who, who have gone through this experience. And we really offer it to all semesters, but this fall in particular, um, this cohort of students did this immersion during what would have otherwise been their traditional clinical immersion or preceptor experience in their fourth semester. Um, typically, we place those students in the urban setting or urban our urban partners, but these 11 students did go and complete their clinical immersion across the state of South Dakota during that, that period. Of the 21 students, 17 said they have lived in a rural setting before and four have not. Um, our student base really pulls from Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, maybe a little bit of Minnesota. And, it, and a lot of those um, states are also very rural. So it wasn't surprising to me that 17 students have lived in a rural setting at some point in their life. Uh, go ahead, next slide. So we first asked students two questions and you'll see the pre-survey pre is in, in blue and then the orange is their post-survey. 
we asked students two questions and they rated it from very poor to excellent. And the first question was, how would you rate your knowledge of nursing in acute care rural settings? And on a scale of one to five, 3.5 pre and then 4.06 after their experience. So this is exactly what we wanted to see was that increase in awareness and um, competency in rural health and uh, nursing after the experience. The next question was how well did our program, USD Nursing, prepare them to be a nurse in, in, in a rural setting? And that really was unchanged, which doesn't surprise me either. Um, I guess 3.7 is a good score for us, um, but hopefully with this grant and, and, and making the curriculum revisions through this grant, we'll see that number continue to rise. Um, next slide. So then again, um, another question we asked is we wanted students' perceptions on their confidence in these different concepts, critical thinking, professionalism, leadership, communication, communication with the team, healthcare technology, and collaborative practice. And as you can see, um, it's not, it hasn't changed much. Um, I would have thought to see a little bit higher orange than blue post-survey, but again, we have a very small number of students right now, I think um, 21, and even in the post-survey, we only had 18 results so far. Um, there are a few of the students who are still or had been completing their clinical immersion and haven't taken this the survey. So I'll be interested to see how these numbers uh, fluctuate in year two and then in year three. But our hope is that we see an uptick in that orange, um, the more students that we add to this experience. Uh, next slide. So this is, this is the information that excites me is how likely are you to work in a rural setting? And we did again, pre and post. And as you'll see, um, Pre, we had a lot of somewhat unlikelies and some neutrals, some somewhat likelies. But as students completed their experience and completed the post-survey, we saw those numbers shift where there were zero somewhat unlikely, a couple neutral, more somewhat likely, and then more extremely likely. So this is the impact we are wanting to have. We are wanting to move students to that somewhat likely or extremely likely that they'll work in a rural setting upon graduation. Uh, next slide. We did also ask for some qualitative data um, from the students. And one of them was, what did you enjoy most about your rural immersion experience? And we did see some themes here um, the ability to work in multiple settings in the hospital. A lot of times students would say, I would be on med surge one day and then I'd be in the ER and then they'd pull me, you know, maybe we had a labor and delivery come in or the helicopter had to come in. That probably is by far um, the biggest theme that we hear is just that ability to have those multiple experiences in any given day. Another is the diverse experiences with patients, the different patients they see in the different settings they see. And then third, that they really felt like they were working independently in the nursing role. They felt like a nurse. They really enjoyed it. In fact, we had one student say, I don't know what they would have done if I hadn't been there. So it is really um, some of the experiences they've had have been really wonderful. Uh, next slide. So what could rural healthcare facilities do to entice new nurses? And again, themes, pay and benefits. They want to know, they want competitive pay. They want to know, is there any kind of um, loan repayment opportunities? Um, they also want, want rural facilities to come to them in their last semester and tell them about their opportunities. So one thing we did not mention earlier, part of this grant is we do have rural health career fairs um, 
every year where we invite rural partners from across the state to come join us and then um, interact with our students. So that is one thing students said. And then they also want facilities to really talk about their communities and what the communities have to offer them, their spouses, their children, so that um, that there's more for them to come to these communities. Uh, next slide, please. And then what could rural communities do? And um, this is kind of, we there. I haven't been able to really ascertain any themes here, but they want affordable housing. What are the unique benefits? Um, they would love to hear from community members and what it's like to live in that area. Um, so it's, I think our community partners and our healthcare partners will take this, I hope, as a way to really kind of entice students into their communities. Um, next slide, please. Now I'll turn it over to Dawn. So one of the assignments that we had the students do while they were uh, completing their hours is to keep a journal, like a log. And we had them click completed about midway through and then again at the end. And it was just so rewarding to see some of the comments um, that, that, that the students um, share with us. Uh, so just took a couple clips out of here that I thought were, were really reflective of how the students um, felt. So the first one says, I feel excited, confident, eager, empowered, and awkward. And that was about halfway through um, the, the hours. And I just thought this was so, uh, so interesting. And I specifically asked her about um, awkward and she said, oh, it's a great awkward. It's just that there's so many things that are new uh, to me and the way that everything is done is just so different, but it's just a fantastic awkward because I'm learning a lot of new things. And then another one um, that we really grabbed my eyes uh, was this bottom one here. And it says, overall, I enjoyed my experience in a rural setting. It's not initially somewhere I ever imagined ending up in the future, but after the summer, I could see myself working in a rural area. And I think that really sums up one of the primary reasons that we're doing this grant is just for the students to realize what they didn't know, what are the great opportunities that are out in the rural setting. So I just wanted to share a couple of their, their quotes with you. Next slide, please. Well, now we have the honor of moving on to the sharing of our student experiences from their experience with this um, grant. And this is really getting to the heart of rural nursing and hearing about these experiences in the rural settings in rural South Dakota. So it is my honor to introduce Sadie Finnegan, Victor Sima, and Dan Virek uh, to you as the um, USD nursing students. And all three of these students will be graduating here in December and becoming nurses um, in 2024. Um, so it is exciting to have them here, and I welcome them, and um, we'll hand it off to them. Um, and next slide, please. So I'm Dan Bierick. Um, I had my immersion in Yankton, South Dakota, which is also in the southeast corner. We're about 30 minutes away from Vermilion. Uh, and I've actually lived almost my whole life in Yankton. So I know the community very well. Um, it's, we have about 15,000 people in Yankton. Um, and we have this beautiful lake right off the Missouri River that keeps me in Yankton for most of the time. So for my immersion, I, spent it at Avera Sacred Heart in Yankton on the med surge floor and the nurse I was paired with uh, worked straight nights so my shifts would start at 7 p.m and go to about 7 30 in the morning and um, I had never worked a night shift before so I was a little curious on how that was going to go it kind of has a stereotype of oh the night shift just kind of sits around but it is very very busy on night shift um, when you first go in at seven, you're kind of running your tail off. You're doing your, your head to toe assessments on all your patients after the patient report with the nurse. Um, you're passing 
meds, kind of getting everyone ready for their bedtime, which they don't get much sleep, but um, it was just overall a really good experience. Um, I'll let Victor introduce himself. Yeah. Uh, my name is Victor Sima. I also did my immersion um, at a very sacred heart in Yankton. I did most of my um, clinicals on the med surge floor and I was able to spend a few of them a few of the days in the ICU as well um, there's a few days that the med surge was full um, so they had some overflow down to the ICU I was able to work with and you know care for and assess some of the ICU patients uh, I was lucky enough to be on all day shifts uh, my nurse works all day so it was 7 a.m um, to about 7 30 p.m um, and kind of similar to what Dan said in the morning you get there and you know, you go right into your assessments, you go and introduce yourself to all your patients. Uh, being there in the day, in the morning, there's a really good chance there's going to be post-op patients coming up early. Uh, they do the surgeries early in the morning, so mid-morning they can be busy with people coming out of surgery. Um, and they can stay busy the whole day, too. Like he said, you can spend 12 hours being busy nonstop. Uh, but it was a good experience. I think the ICU uh, was... For me personally, uh, my favorite, I, we were able to take everything we've learned in school and kind of piece all this together, all of our knowledge, and really do that holistic approach for some of those critical patients. You were on mute, Helene. Oh, sorry. Next slide, please. I'm Sadie Finnegan. I was in Sturgis, South Dakota at the Monument Health Facility, which is a critical access hospital. Sturgis is a lot smaller than Yankton. It's a town of 7,000 people. And these pictures show Sturgis very well. It's very outdoorsy, rural, lots of hills. So people go there a lot for hiking and seeing everything. I went back and forth with my nurse between the med surge floor and the emergency room department. I was the nurse that I was with was a charge nurse, so I got to see a different side of nursing that I haven't seen before. And through this HRSA grant, I was able to see a different side of nursing and a different side of South Dakota. I'm originally from Nebraska, so this was a six hour drive for me. So getting the gas paid for was huge for me. Next slide. So some of the challenges in the healthcare delivery in South Dakota, um, you know, most of our population, it is very rural. Um, we're kind of fortunate in Yankton. We're kind of like a, a stepping stone between the very rural populations to our largest population, Sioux Falls. We're about 70 miles from them. So um, Yankton's Hospital is um, capable of handling a lot of things on their own. We have a med surge, we have our own ICU, we have a labor and delivery, um, we have the ER department, um, we have orthopedic surgeons, we have cardiovascular surgeons that can handle the common stuff. So it's kind of nice for, we have a lot of smaller surrounding um, towns around half hour away. Um, we receive a lot via ambulance from them. Um, there's in the smaller towns, there's a lot of um, aging populations. So we typically see a lot of falls and fractures, of, a lot of hip fractures. I think almost every shift there was at least one hip fracture on med surge that had come in overnight. That's awaiting sur surgery in the morning. Um, but also with living in South Dakota in the summertime, you know, it's 110 degrees. In the wintertime, it can be negative 40 with the wind chill. So with that driving, we are capable of flying to Sioux Falls, but if it's during a blizzard, we can't, we have to make do with what we can while we're there because they can't have any flights or can't be uh they close the interstate down a lot in the winter time so you couldn't even travel by ambulance if you wanted to um 
and that's some of the challenges for Yankton. Yeah, I and mean, one of the ones I saw too, kind of to go off what Dan mentioned, is since we do have some of these populations coming from rural areas, um, it can be a challenge to get them when they are done in the hospital. It is can be hard to get them placed um, in a facility where they are from. There might not be one there, or there may not be enough beds, or they might not have enough staff. Um, and also, like the weather, he said, maybe somebody is ready to go home, but you know the roads are too bad or they have a four hour drive or whatever it may be. Yeah, going off of that, when there's bad weather, many nurses stay the night at the hospital and keep working. And um, we don't have, in Sturgis, there is no labor and delivery and there's no orthopedics or anything what Dan mentioned at all. So the nurses really have to be well-rounded and know how to keep the patient stable enough to get that patient transferred to the nearest big city, which is Rapid City. And that's about a 40 minute drive. <clears throat> Another thing that I would say Sturgis sees, sees is farming accidents and four wheeler accidents, which I'll talk about later. Next slide, please. I will speak on leadership. I mentioned this earlier, my nurse was the charge nurse and she went back and forth between the emergency room department and the med surge floor. She would go to the emergency room department when it was really busy since there is just one nurse and one provider in the emergency room. So when things would get busy, she would go there and help out and then she would go back and float back to the med surge floor. And if a nurse was getting a little frustrated or tired at times, she would tell that nurse that she would take over that patient and tell the nurse to go outside, go for a walk. And that was really, really awesome to see. So no nurses got burnt out. Um, on the communication at Avera, uh, employees, when they come into work, they will grab a phone off the docking station and they log into a program called uh, Vault. And within Vault, they can secure message, any other staff members, um, any physicians on call, or even a physician at home that's not on call. Uh, it makes communication really easy between everyone. You kind of, you're not running around trying to find that person. You can have instant messages back and forth if something is going wrong. And um, with that, it also built my communication skills because as students, we are not granted access to the vault. So during my whole immersion, um, all my interactions were face-to-face. -face. Um, if uh, like our first couple shifts, we were assigned as help all, where we don't have any patients ourselves, We are kind of afloat to help all the other nurses. And then we would be the first to receive um, transfers throughout the night. So during those shifts, anytime I would answer a call light or do something in a room, I would have to go find that nurse, explain what I did or what the patient needed. Um, interactions with like the nurse practitioner would be face to face with, with them. So it just really built my communication skills throughout my immersion. On the critical thinking aspect, um, I kind of mentioned this a couple of slides ago, since I spent some time in the ICU, I think we were really able to use that, um, just caring for those more critical patients. Um, there's so many different aspects to their care, um, and they just, they have a lot more needs than a lot of the other patients. Um, that's why they do the, one, you know, one-to-one -one or one-to-two patients for those nurses down there, um, just because they take so much more time and there's so many different um aspects to their care um, and even on the med surge floor too uh, some of those days it would get pretty busy if there all the beds are full all you know all the nurses have five patients um, that really kind of teaches you that time management um, how to most effectively care for those patients um, you know i think what it really has you think ahead i guess um, so you don't get yourself buried in work and you're you know getting everything done taking care of everybody the best you can Next slide, please. We're now going to hear about their experiences uh, 
that this team had with the use of telehealth in rural South Dakota. Yeah, I experienced telehealth twice, both where it was in the emergency room. One was with a mental health patient. He was schizophrenic and the provider didn't have all the skills that she felt she needed to give for this patient. So we gave this patient an iPad and he was able to FaceTime tell, um, through telehealth, Avil Behavior Hospital, which is about two, three hours away from Sturgis. So he was able to save gas, save money. And he also saw a professional through this, which really helped him and he felt safe and like it really benefited his health. Another situation was a four-wheeler accident and this guy hit a deer and he flew off his four-wheeler and he came in to the emergency room department. He needed a thoracentesis, which for those of you that don't know, is a large needle that gets put into the pleural cavity of the lung so that it takes out the extra liquid so he's able to breathe. And the provider at the time wasn't super comfortable doing this procedure, but it was 40 minutes from Rapid City, so it needed to be done. So this provider called two other providers in Rapid City through telehealth, and they were placed on a TV that was in the corner. And in the room, there was a video camera so we were able to talk to these two providers that had done this procedure many times and they walked that provider through the whole procedure. So that provider felt super comfortable. The patient felt safe since there was three providers looking over him and we were able to chart in real time for nurses since there is a low staff of nurses. That was a huge deal. So for example, I placed the Foley, so I was like, fully placed right now and they were able to chart it in real time for me. And this patient was stable enough after the procedure was done, they were able to transfer to Rapid City to get the more healthcare that he needed. And I saw the telehealth use quite a bit actually. Um, on the med search floor, they will use it. Uh, the thing I saw for the most, um, they'll have like an infectious disease consult. Um, then they can talk to a doctor that um, is somewhere else in the state or maybe even be out of state. And same thing, they can set up an iPad and they can have a video and audio conversation with this person and ask them their questions and do an assessment virtually. Um, whereas we may not have an infectious disease doctor here present at the site. Um, I see them use sometimes um, in the ER, um, if they have a critical patient come in, you know, something like a heart attack or a stroke um, or a trauma that they're trying to get them stabilized before they fly them out. They will have the doctors and nurses in the ER there, but they will also have a camera and video set up for a remote doctor just to have a second set of eyes on the patient and help out that ER doctor there. Um, and as we talked about earlier with the rural part of South Dakota, some of these patients that go home um, and they maybe need to talk to a doctor, have them look at something instead of having to drive, you know, extended amount of time to come in and see a provider. They can just do it virtually, you know, video chat. Um, and then the weather plays into that too. You know, if we're having bad weather in the winter. You know, they can talk to a doctor and have a meeting with them in their home and not have to worry about going out or making a long drive. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, so now we're going to be opening it up to questions, but I already have a few questions and maybe some of our other um, participants here have some questions too, but I'm wondering if you could share about your experiences and what you saw. Um, Sadie, you shared um, how telehealth helped with mental health. Did you have any other experiences with mental health? Um, and where in South Dakota are people treated for mental health conditions? Yeah, there was a big mental health problem in Western South Dakota. I think that correlates with alcoholism too. There's also a reservation nearby. And we would use the telehealth through AVEL, A-V-E-L Behavior Health Hospital, which is north of Sturgis. 
from my understanding. I don't know Southwestern South Dakota super well, but it's about two or three hours away. Um, is there a, a hospital um, in the southeastern part of the state for mental health conditions at all? Yeah, so Yankton has um, HSC, which is the only mental public funded mental health hospital in the state, which is kind of at a disadvantage being in the southeast corner at like that. So telehealth really helps with that, but and having only that one hospital uh, placement for it is very hard. They are constantly full and can't even accept patients in at the time. Short staffing there as well, yeah. um, just as we see in the hospital. I have an additional uh, uh, question, or if maybe Sadie, could you um, talk a little bit about the challenges that they have of the large motorcycle rally event in Sturgis and how they handle that? Oh yes, the Sturgis rally happens at the end of every summer annually and thousands on thousands of people from across the world come to travel on their motorcycles and it is not safe at all. There's lots of accidents, there's lots of drinking and driving and the hospitals everywhere nearby are super busy and Sturgis specifically takes volunteers from across the state, healthcare providers, nurses, patient care techs, people from across the state come and help out, which makes the healthcare very, very feasible, better. And the nurses at the time don't get overloaded. Thank you. While we're waiting for it, other people who are with us to um, insert questions, if you'd like, I would love to hear about what was your biggest joy or what was most joyful for you working in this rural health, in these rural health settings. Everyone's thinking. <laughs> I think really um, taking on that nursing role uh, not just using all of our knowledge we've learned here at school the last few years, um, but being there for the nurses, you know, their 12 hour shifts every day and working multiple days in a row and kind of really getting to that role of this is what it's going to look like. You know, this is real life clinicals for us. Um, I know for me, because we were there so many days in a row, some weeks, you get to know the staff better. You get to see some of the same patients. Um, there's a lot of aspects um, that become easier just because you're a familiar face there. Um, they know what you're capable of doing, um, and you just get more comfortable um, you know, doing those nursing skills. Yeah, going off of that, when you're there for multiple days in a row, you get similar patients every day. And I got pretty close with the patient, and she felt super comfortable with me, and she thanked me a million times when she got discharged. She's like, I didn't even know that you were a student nurse until the very end. And she was like, I just felt so much confidence working with you. And that was towards the end of my immersion when I was super confident in the nursing rules. And I, that really brought me joy. Um, I think my biggest joy overall is, so I am married with four children. I definitely skew that average age number, <laughs> but um, we, we live in Yankton, like I said before, and all our family is really close. We don't really have any plans of moving our children outside of Yankton. So this grant was kind of more of like a C. Uh, I really wanted to work at Avera graduating. So this was kind of like uh, almost like a little trial, I guess you could call it as working there. And I just absolutely loved it. The staff was so amazing. They were uh, really easy to get along with. They were always willing to grab me for something new and exciting. And it just, uh, it was a nice ease for me, basically, um, that I know I'm going to love it here when I'm done with school. Fantastic. Those answers all gave me goosebumps. I know. Not just a trial for you, but they they got a trial on you as well. I mean, it was kind of like a mini job interview, I would assume. Yeah, it worked yeah. out because I interviewed four hours before my final 
overnight shift. So that made for a long night on that overnight shift. But um, two days later, I did accept a position there. So that's a huge fantastic. That is off huge. the shoulders for post-graduation. So I do have a question as well. Um, I think one of the, the challenges that rural nurses face is working in the same community that you live. It can be both a, a, a benefit and it can also be very difficult when it's the people you know outside of the facility that you're now treating in the facility. Do you guys foresee, I know Sadie, you're from Nebraska and probably didn't know anybody in Sturgis, but what are some of the challenges you feel you could encounter working in the same community, small community that you're living in? Yeah, I would say you see a lot of the same patients over and over. Alcohol, for example, the same alcoholic will come in, get treatment, get discharged, and then a week later, you'll see that same patient with alcohol. And it could get frustrating, but I think the nurses and Sturges are really well with switching things up, like different nurses will go to that patient so nobody gets burnt out that patient and that patient gets the best treatment overall. And my nurse is a charge nurse. So being in that community, she's friends with the nurses and they're all, they could be 20 years older than her too. And she's the charge nurse over them, which I thought was super unique. You know, she's charge nurse at 26 years old, but she's over 40, 50 year old nurses but she still treated everybody with respect and showed leadership and she really earned that spot. I think just with like knowing a lot of the community members, if they come in as a patient, um, just knowing that it's, it's okay. Um, if they aren't comfortable with you there, just making sure that it's, is ultimately it is the patient's choice on if they want and just knowing that that's not anything personal just respecting their wishes I, sh I guess if they request a different nurse or... we do have a question coming through the Q&A as well and this one is for faculty so um, it was asked what strategies you use to recruit students to do rural clinic experiences and what percentage of students seek positions in rural care? So I will take just the first part about um, the number of students that seek positions. Um, actually, Dan, Sadie, and Victor, are our first, they're our second cohort or first, I can't remember, but they're the first to graduate. So we, aside from what Dan just said in Avera, he's the only one that we know has a job in a rural setting. So we're, we will be looking at that in the spring where you plan on doing um, a post-graduate survey to see where our students are employed following their graduation and licensure. So I will let Helene and Don speak to how they recruited students. Thank you. Um, and, and so um, Dawn and I, um, in recruiting students, it was, and we also had two other um, team members who were advisors that also helped in the recruiting process. So we went to the classrooms and talked with the students and presented the experience. But because of the work um, that Dr. Klein Hesselink had done in getting this grant, um, it really helped um, that there was a stipend um, that the students were getting two thousand dollars at their lodging and that their food was being paid for that was a really help to help to sell um the experience and um and at the same time the students were some of the students were excited to explore um, different communities throughout the state of south dakota so many students here on the eastern side of the state had never been to the western side and so as sadie shared um she took it on as an adventure um, so um, students, we really haven't had a problem. Um, and as we shared, we can do 24 students over um, the uh, a year. And so we so far have not had a problem uh, getting those students to uh, participate. Um, Dawn, what else do you have to yeah. share? I would just add that 
when we found out that the students, the students that were interested, we had one-on-one -on -one meetings with them, either in person or via Zoom, just to really talk about their interests and what they really, you know, what they wanted to get out of the experience so we could help them with the placement, et cetera, and make sure it was a good fit for them. I think that helped a lot. And then honestly, after the first cohort this summer, the word of mouth was is was huge just because it was such a great experience. Um, and I think kind of the word spread. And then this this last second group, we had even many more that were interested. And now we already have a large group set up for the next couple, you know, next couple cohorts. So I think word of mouth, they just know what a great experience it is. Um, and, and that has been a big recruit, recruitment tool in itself. Is there any other questions for our presenters today? Give it a, another minute or two. Um, and just as a reminder, we are going to have additional opportunities to connect through, through the website. So if something comes up later, please feel free to go ahead and just drop that in the forum and we can go ahead and get that answered for you. And I see that um, Marilyn Barrett has her hand raised. So let me see if I can unmute you and we'll allow you the opportunity to ask your question. Are you there, Marilyn? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I am so thrilled um, to be listening to your, um, to your seminar. Um, I live in a rural community in uh, northern Wisconsin, and I've had several HRSA grants trying to get nurses, students into rural areas, and I applaud your, your efforts, and I just can't tell you how important it is, the work that you're doing, and I'm just thrilled to be listening to your students who have gone and enjoying rural, and again, it's just, it's in my heart that I'm just so happy that we're trying to help students realize that, that rural care is can be amazing and it's a wonderful experience. And, and I think you're on the right track and I'm so happy about what you're doing here. And I wish you luck with your HRSA grant. If you need help, I've got lots of experience, but I applaud your work and please keep moving forward. And the students I've been listening to, you guys are amazing. Um, your stories, and I'm just thrilled that um, people in rural communities are going to be able to have your care. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Um, I, having been a critical access nurse for years and mostly working in the emergency department, this is a passion for me. I, um, I've often said, you just need to experience it to know the diversity you have within the rural health nursing Um and I'm just excited. I would love to do this on and on and on and on for years to come. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, um, we are gonna go ahead and we will wrap up. Um, I will also share that our presenters have been kind enough to offer a second webinar, which is going to be held this evening at 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, we tend to do this to accommodate for time zones around the world. So if there is anyone that you know would enjoy hearing these conversations and enjoy participating in the presentation, our um, registration will remain open through the remainder of today. So um, please feel free to share that with your colleagues or your students or your peers um, to join us this evening if they hadn't had time this morning. Um, and then we will also hear from a different cohort of students towards the end of the month um, and learn about new experiences um, from how they're moving forward with their immersion learning experiences. So we do hope to see you um, at that time as well. So once again, um, I'd like to thank um, our students and our presenters today. We're so grateful that you have joined us for your partnership with GRNEN in sharing these experiences so we can continue to improve the access of care in our rural areas and um, expose students to these opportunities. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us today. 
Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and um, maybe we'll see some of you all in a couple of weeks. Take Thank care. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you.